Okay. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Romans <laughs> chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, and we're going to begin at verse 14. I, I told you this morning I want to, want to remind you, uh, uh, Romans 7, 14, that the greatest struggle you will ever have you'll have in life is not with somebody else. So many times people think that, that somebody else is the biggest adversary that they'll have. I contend that's not so. Your greatest struggle in life is going to be with the person that you look in the mirror that's looking back at you. That's going to be your greatest struggle. But now in Romans the chapter 7, if you have your Bibles, turn to verse 14 and begin reading, uh, Brother Richard, uh, whichever one of your brethren have it. Notice what Paul had to say, talking to the parent there at Rome. He said, for we know that the law is spiritual. But, I am but oh, Paul says, I. Now, we know this is Paul because in the Corinthian letter, he, first, first Corinthians 3, Paul Yes, that word carnal, carnal, which means what? Fleshly. It keeps coming up. Paul said the law is spiritual, I but I, if I, if the law is spiritual and I'm carnal, that means we're going to have a problem because one won't one thing and one won't the other. Read on, preacher. What does the Bible say? Uh-huh. For that which I do. That, for that which I do, I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. That, that do I not. But, but what I hate, that, that I do. I sound like a man all oh, mixed up. I'm here to tell you, he's talking about the struggle that goes on in the body, in the flesh. There's a struggle. You may not realize it, but there's a struggle going on in you. Every one of us struggles. Now, some folk more than others, but the flesh wrestles against what you know. It tell you, you ain't, power will say, love your enemy, you ought to knock him down. The flesh says that. But Jesus said, love your enemy. That's not what the flesh says. We don't. If then I do that which I would not. If then I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. Amen. Read on. Now is no longer I that, that do it, but sin, but sin dwells in me. in me. It dwells in all of us. We struggle with sin. Everybody don't have the same, the struggle, same thing to struggle, Sister Barry, but we all struggle with something in our lives. And, 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 and when you can learn what it is, when you can learn what it is, that's your Achilles heel. Unless somebody has to, tell you, has to tell you what's wrong with you. I'm not talking about sin in a, in a general sense, but I'm saying that every one of us have something that we have difficulty with. We struggle with. And you know, I said, well, Lord, help me. I realize when I come to this point, I got a problem. But there's no better place to take it than to take it to the Lord. Well, then you take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Read that, preacher. For I know that in me. For I know that in me. That is in my flesh. That is, he tell you what he said. I know what's in me. That, that is, is in my flesh. Well, there's no, no good thing. I'm wrestling with it. Read it. For to will. For to will. For to will is present with me. Perform that which is good, I find not. I know, I know what's right. Sometimes when you pick the Bible up, it isn't a question, Sister Davis, of knowing what's right. The question is doing it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When you're out there, Floyd, on I four headed, west headed, east, wherever you're headed, you know it ain't right when a man cuts in front of you. <laughs> you know it's not right to say something ugly to him. Amen. But I'm saying that's where you got to let the spirit help you. The flesh is going to tell you. A lot of folks, see, he, see, if you follow the word of God, it can help you. There are people who have lost their life. Because, Sister Harrison, they let the flesh 
ruled them. I remember seeing on TV where a guy, this guy, something had transpired on the interstate. He followed him home and he shot him down. That's right. That's right. I, I saw the same news. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, 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 now brother, brother, brother Richardson, I might have told you, I told you before, hear it again. I was coming home one time, a couple of white boys. <laughs> hey, man. Now, now, some of them looking at me funny. Tell them you can take it. There you go. He ain't, you don't have no problem with that. I must have, I didn't realize, I must have drifted over in their lane. And then next thing they got up to me and start saying something. And you know what my flesh started telling me to do? Pull over. Talk to them boys. Let them boys know what's going on. That's what the flesh told me to do. But they found a tank car. Right. I, the spirit finally, it, 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 it helped me. Something told me, you better go on home, boy. You better go on home. And I went home. Amen. Because see, when you get out, you don't know what going to happen if you stop. Now, brother, we don't know what the Bible said. Father could. That, that I, I would. would. I do not. I do not. I know what's good, but I'm not doing that. But the evil which is, which I would not, that I do. No, I, 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 the evil that I ain't got no business doing, that's what I do. That's what I do. It's a struggle, Sister Harrison. It's a struggle, Brother Floyd. It's a struggle, Brother Brown. It's a struggle, Brother Richard. We all have this struggle. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. Read on, brother. What does the Bible say? If I do that, I would not. It is no longer I that do it. Uh huh. But sin that dwelleth in me. Not me, but sin that taken over. Caught me doing what I ought not do. Saying what I ought not say. Sometimes, but you, you ought to talk back to him. Got to learn. I believe the word maturity came up in our Sunday school. We got to learn to mature. When you are able to hear something that calls you anger, yet you're able to control yourself. That means you are maturing, Brother Richardson. Right. You're growing up spiritually. Anybody can be a fool. Yeah. Anybody can hit somebody and knock them down. That requires a great deal of intellect to do that. But it takes a real man to walk away. Isn't that right, Brother Richardson? Right. Take a real man. Take a real man. Amen. I remember on my job one time, years ago, there was this young man. He wanted to jump on me. He wanted to jump on me. But I thank God. I told him, look here. I done, you see me, you want to jump on the preacher? That's right. Amen. He said, I said, uh, I've been here too long. To lose my job over you. All right. I said, come on, let's go to the man. We went to the man, but I still kind of let the flesh get to me. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? Got him in there and I told him, man, I said, but I told him this. When we leave here, <laughs> ain't no fence around me. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I was wrong. But I let the flesh Get the better of me. But you know what? Sometimes you let God take care of things, Brother Brown. He'll work it out. Same young man. I wasn't there that day. He jumped on somebody else and he was gone. See? Let God take care of it. Don't you try to let him fight your battle. Some of us want to, well, Lord, you just ain't moving fast enough for me. Ain't moving fast enough for me. Read on, brethren, so we can get on into the lesson. I find in a law. I find in a law. That when I would do good, good evil is, is present. When I do the right thing, I find that I'm struggling with evil. Read on. Evil is present with me. Uh -huh, evil is present with me. Read it. For I delight in the law of God. Uh huh. I delight in the law of God in the inward man, the man, the inner man. Read it. But I see another law. I see, Paul said, I see another law in my members. Why? Against the law. Talking about the law. Talking about sin. Talking about the flesh. Why against me? Read it. Bringing me into 
bringing me into captivity if you are not careful sin will capture you amen somebody say take a hit this joint you not take but one time and you hook you got to learn that something you don't you don't deal with and I just thank God I've never in my life used drugs of any sort. All right. All right. Now I've been around folk that used them. When I was in the military, in the Navy, Brother Richardson, yes, and I probably was, wasn't wise in what I was doing then. You know how like, we like to go out with guys? That's what I was doing, them guys. And we were going out one night, we were going to the movie. And them boys start running all out there in the traffic. And I, I, I said, let me tell you something. And I saw how silly they were acting. I said, this, if this is how drugs make you act, I don't need none. Right. I have enough problem with my mind like it is not. I don't need to have something that's going to twist my mind up. Right. Man. Man. But oh, read on, brother. Let me go. Oh, repulse, oh, wretched man that I am. Who got a problem here, Houston? Got a problem. Who is going to deliver me from, this body from the of this, body of this, death. of this death? Got a problem. Who's going to deliver me? But he's going to give you the answer. Who's going to deliver him? I thank God. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, with my mind I self serve the Lord. Uh huh. The law of sin. Thank you, brother. Thank you. The subject tonight is victory over self. I'm not talking about victory over somebody else. I'm talking about victory over yourself. We all struggle with something. If you have your Bible, Matthew the 16th chapter, verse 24. Somebody give me Luke six, Luke, Luke chapter nine and verse 23. He calls on us, calls on us to deny ourselves. We live in a society that tells us we got to have everything. You don't have to deny yourself this. You ought to have it. Now notice what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24. What does he say? Matthew 16, 24. Huh? And Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man come after me. He didn't say some men. Say any man come after me. Let him deny. Man, I ain't doing without this. I got to have some of this. We live in a very materialistic society. And if you've had your television on like I've had mine on, they tell you got to get the Apple Watch. Now this ain't no Apple Watch, I'm just putting it out here. I ain't got no Apple Watch. And you know what though, Brother Floyd? I don't have a whole lot of problem with this time of year. I don't. Because I have learned, doesn't matter with me, brother. I don't get, I don't get all caught up in that. But I remember how it was as a child. I remember the great joy that I felt. Because you see, unlike today, we only got something once a year. Ain't like it is now. You can't get something every other week. But we got something once a year. Man, Daddy got ten children. You know where you gonna get stuff? Plus we poor. The only problem is that someone said we didn't know we was poor. All right. Only got something Christmas time. And when, when, when Christmas Eve came, I couldn't wait to go to bed. Right. Sister Rich and Daddy made me go to bed. I, hey, I would get up. Brother Richardson, show you how silly I was. Right. I would go outside looking for the reindeer tracks. <laughs> and... I didn't know the difference between a dog track and a reindeer track. But I'm looking, surely Santa Claus, he, he been here, look at them tracks out there. But I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm telling you, look here, look here. I, 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 I did not want to deny myself. But Jesus, if any man come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and do what? Take up his cross. And follow me. He said, first of all, if you're going to follow me, here is something you got to learn. You got to learn to deny yourself. You know what? 
I, I ain't looking for no Santa Claus. Right. Y'all mighty quiet in you. Right. I'm not, I'm not bothered. I ain't bothered by that. But if you don't get that, Brother Kevin, so. Now, I know everybody may not feel like I feel. I ain't trying to push on you how I feel. You better have me something. <laughs> Amen, Walt. Don't start looking on the floor now. Amen. But you know what? Oh, well, I hope I don't get beat up when I, for saying this. She said, you hard to buy for. Because y'all don't ever know what you want. And that's true. I, I, I don't know a thing, and this is the gospel truth. I don't know one thing as I stand before you tonight that I want. I don't. There ain't no, there's no watch. There's no, I can't think of anything that I really, you know, man, I got to have that. I don't want one of them hover boys. I can't even skate. Amen. But I don't know of anything that I really can say that I truly want. I don't. I don't. Now, that might not be how you feel. I'm just speaking for Carison. <laughs> if you will, Luke the chapter is 9 and the verse is 23. Note the Bible says, not only must a man deny himself, but he must take up his cross and follow Jesus. Luke the chapter is 9 and the verse is 33. And then somebody get Luke the chapter 14, verse 33. What does the Bible say? He said to them all. And he said to all of them, if any man will come after any man will follow me. Let him deny himself. And take up his cross. Take up his cross. Daily. daily. On a daily basis, you got to follow me. When he say take up your cross, he's simply saying, hey, you got to be willing to embrace the same thing that I embrace. You got to be willing to, to endure the same thing that I endure. Take up your cross and follow me. Daily. daily. Not just when you feel like it. And when it's convenient for you, but he say daily. Now, in the book of Luke, the chapter is 14. And I want you to, I'll tell you what, Luke 14. Don't start at 33. I want you to start really. Uh, uh, let me, uh, Luke 14 and the verse is, wait a minute. Oh, 14, nevertheless, okay, then give me verse Give me verse 32. I'll just use 32 and 33. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sent his he said, ambassador. I want you to, first of all, he's talking about counting the cost. What is it going to cost you to follow Jesus? There's a cost. If you want, it's like somebody want to be a doctor. If you want to be a doctor, you better understand what you're getting involved in. This ain't no two-year course. You got to understand, what is it going to cost? Many times folk are baptized and they don't really realize what it's all about. All right. This isn't something you, you baptize and like, well, if they make me mad, I'm gone. You don't understand the truth. You got to count the cost. What the writer was saying in that parable there, he said, look here, look here. He said, now look here, if, 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 you, if you look ahead right. and you don't have but 10,000, and the man coming got 20,000. He said, what you need to do is send a hat. And he used the word ambassador, what it, an ambassador. Right. Somebody to talk for you. Say, look here, let me, let me see what kind of conditions right. of peace we can, we, can, we can work something out. Because see, you got 20,000, I only got 10. But you got to count. Read on, brother. So likewise. So likewise. Ever be of you uh -huh. that forsake is not all that he has. No, what is it? That forsake is not all that he has. He, be he said, You can't be my disciple. See, so you got to forsake who? All. I can't, I don't know whether I can do that. Well, I'm going to tell you what the master said. He said, You can't be my disciple. He said, You got to forsake all that you have. It costs you to follow the master. Sometimes it costs you friends. Sometimes Family members will get angry at you because you folk in the Church of Christ, y'all think y'all the only one right. That's right. I'm telling you, it'll cost you something. Sometimes it could cost you a relationship on the job. Especially if it ever come up with somebody who won't want to know the truth. Amen. So it's going to cost you something. Not only that, church, 
But as we look on self-sacrifice, if you want to follow Christ, Matthew the chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, self-sacrifice for Christ. It say, sometime you're going to have to sacrifice in order to follow Jesus. Say it in Matthew 6, 16, 25 and 26. What did he say? Whosoever will save his life. Whosoever will save his life will do what? He said, you're going to lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life. Whosoever shall lose his life. For my sake. For my sake. She'll find it. See, if you in Jesus' day, that was a reality. There were times when men would actually lose their life. Not only that, when you go back in history with the Christians, there were Christians that were burned. It cost them something to be a Christian. It for cost what? them. You know. For what is a man problem? If he should gain the whole world. Whole world. And lose his own soul. Now, what, shall a man give what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What do you have to give to the Lord? And Brother Gaz and I got money in the bank. It belonged to him anyway. Brother Gaz and I got some land. It belonged to him anyway. I believe Hosea said the silver and the gold, he said, is mine. All of it belonged to him. You don't have anything that, that you own because all of us, you bought it here. And you're going to leave it here. What did Paul say to Timothy? Right. We bought nothing into this world. Into this world. And of a sudden, you're not going to take anything out. I've done some fields that I've been to some. Ain't never seen anybody take anything with them. Yeah. Amen? So what he's trying to get you, you need to understand the values of life. I believe Paul talking to the Corinthian brethren. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. He's saying you need somebody that can go with you beyond the grave. That's what you need. Grandmama, if she's here, she ain't going with you. I've said this many times, Brother Richard. When you die, them folk go back to their home and eat up all that chicken. I just missed Brother Carson. He's gone now. Child, I got to work tomorrow. You, you just gone. That's right. So that's why you have, to, you have to count the cost yourself. But not only that. Let me move on, church. Persecution was a reality. Matthew the chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Notice, if you will, what Jesus here is talking. In Matthew the chapter 5, the Beatitude, verse 11 and 12, he says what? Blessed are ye. When men shall revile you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. He said, be, be glad. They persecute you, but you see, they got, what they do, they got to say it falsely. Cost you something, young man, to come with you a Christian. Got to understand that. I'm going to cost you something, but not only that. If you will, Mark chapter 10, verse 28 to 30. The price, the price, the price. Those who followed Jesus had to pay was that they would be hated of all men. That's Matthew, the chapter is 10 and the verse is 22. He said, you're going to be hated of all men for my, my name's sake. But he that endure to the end, to the, end same. the same shall be saved. You got to stick it out. You got to stick it out. We understand that when it comes to going to school. You got to go to school and spend all kind of money and then, and then I think I'm going to drop out. No, you, don't, you got too much invested. Too much invested. But he said you got to endure. But sometimes it breaks my heart and I don't have time to talk about it. But I, I've known folk in the church end up, they, they get older and end up leaving the church. I, I said, where are you going? Where are you going? I've seen a number of cases, and I'm telling Sister O'Neill, we were talking about that initially when I was coming in. I said, you know what? I used to be surprised, but I'm not surprised anymore. Remember the church? I said, oh, you got to do, tell them something they can't do. <clears throat> and that's it. I'm gone. But not only that. Not only that. Mark 10, verse 28 and 30. Peter wanted to know. Peter wanted to know something, church. He wanted to know something. What do you want to know, Peter? Peter said, we have lived all. To follow you. Peter want to know, brother Mac. Hey, 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 look here. Peter said, look here, Lord. We done gave up. 
family. We done gave up all these things. Now look here. What do we have? What are we going to get for it? If you will, Mark 10, verse 28 through 30. Notice what the Bible says. Then Peter, Peter began to say unto him, uh -huh. Lo, 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 we have left all. We, plural, mean what? Just him. We have left all. And have followed thee. And we followed you. Don't tell me you start following somebody, you better make sure you know where they're going. Amen. Amen. Peace of Lord, we've left all to follow you. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. there is no man that hath left house, uh -huh. brethren, mm -hmm. or sisters, or father, or mother, uh, or wife, right. or children, or lands, for oh. my sake, in the Gospels. Uh -huh. But he shall receive a hundredfold in, now in this time. This time. Houses, and brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters, and mothers, brother. and children, and okay. lands, with persecutions. Uh -huh. And in the world to come, eternal, eternal life. Eternal life. He said, look here. You're going to get something. You're going to get more than you invested. There is something good about this. When I see that, I think about Job. Job lost everything. At the end, the Bible says the latter years better than the beginning. So I'm saying you got to be willing to stick it out. And Peter's question to me was a relevant one. It was one that was uh, a right question. I said, look at the Lord, we done left everybody. We following you and doing all of this. See, look at what, what we gonna get for this. They stuck it out, stuck it out. I'm, I'm mindful, you don't have to turn there. That's Acts, the chapter is five. And with the attitude that they had, the Bible says that those Jews told them that they straightly, he was asked, did we not warn you right. not to preach and teach in this man's name, but you have bought his blood on our head? Right. And Peter told them, for we ought to obey God rather than man. And when you continue to read that, you'll find what the Bible says. They beat them, and then after they beat them, those boys said, now, well, won't you teach it no more? They went everywhere preaching and teaching Jesus' name. You know what they left, even after they were beat, you know what they left with the attitude? That they, they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame. Not me. Anybody going to beat me like that? I was going to follow in Jesus. They counted that we were counted worthy. Isn't that something when you try to look at that text and say, they, they rejoice. They didn't go nowhere. Let's, let's, let's hold off a few days. The Bible said they went everywhere. Preaching and teaching the word of God. Go beating on their back, then stop them. What does it take to stop you? Huh? A few words that you don't agree with, is that what it takes to stop you? You won't last, you won't last long if that's all it takes. Appreciate tonight, appreciate that. Yo, struggles. Look where you are. God has brought you from January right here now. He's brought you all the way to where we are now. I didn't make it this far because I was lucky. I made it this far because of the mercy of God. You struggle with different kinds of things. You struggle with your health. And I know that there's a God who sits on high and looks down low. He will decide the matter when it's all over with. Tonight, if you're not a Christian, come by hearing the gospel by believing it, repenting in sin, confessing Christ, and put him on in baptism. Rise to walk in the newness of life. But if you're a Christian, oh, Brother Carson, I need to clean my slate. Clean my slate. Now, you may not be able to do it with folk, because sometimes you don't know what you do. Some folks still on. I can't, I don't know whether I can do that. Forgive them. Well, I let you, the Lord told you, if you won't forgive them, he said, well, neither will I forgive you. Okay. So I'm here to tell you the Lord can clean your slate if you need it clean. But so trouble, if you're here tonight and you're here and you're subject, come up together, stand and sing them to you.